Coming up on today's message with Pastor Johnny. Uh, A lack of confession is why so many things are in trouble right now. Marriages and relationships over because somebody wasn't meeting up to some unspoken expectations. Friends and family members no longer talking to one another about something that made one mad and they didn't want to tell them that it made it mad. Friends, business deals going wrong because they didn't want to talk to one another. That's part of our problem. These now, we don't want to open up our mouths and let somebody know what's really going on. We don't want to open up our mouths and tell somebody how we really feel about a situation. We ought to be able to confess. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear the faintest cry and answer by and by. How many of you know that having a little talk with Jesus will make it all right? Testament scripture will come from Romans 10. Romans chapter 10. I'll be starting with the 8th verse going all the way down to the 13th verse. That is Romans 10 starting with verse 8. Uh, I'm going to take a bit of pastoral privilege while I'm up here before I get into the sermon. Uh, Vaughn and worship and arts ministry as long as I'm pastor of this church you, there will be no such thing as going too high is, is the mark is, the, the, there will be no such thing as going too high go as high as you want the spirit to use you The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So if I want to experience God, we're going to have to praise him. So there'll be no such thing as going too high. Romans 10, verse 8. Hear ye the word of the Lord. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's word for God's people and God's people said amen. Amen. You may be seated. For the time that is ours to share together, I want to talk a little bit about a name that delivers. A name that delivers. Everybody loves free samples. That's why you can walk into a H-E-B during the middle of the week and park where you want to park. Walk in, not have to wait for any kind of line. But when you go on a Saturday, you got to park a little further away. And it's a, the aisles aren't as, as empty as they were when you went during the week. Why? Because everybody is there doing their grocery shopping but getting free samples. Same for uh, your Costco's, your Sam's, any place where they are serving free samples on a Saturday, there is a line there. A free concert, even if the the artist that is is performing at said free concert is not good, it's gonna be packed. (laughs) Why? Because we love free stuff. But what we love more than free stuff, I would argue, is fulfillment. Uh, Fulfillment is a big word, a big deal, whether in the world of business, particularly with online retail. Fulfillment is another word for delivery. 
It matters little if the online ordering experience is easy to get along with if the product doesn't come on time. Retail companies, especially the online ones, put a whole bunch of time and energy thinking about the delivery side of their operations. Always thinking about how to get the money out of your hand and into their hand and get the product out of their hand and into your hand, out of your hand into their hand and get the product out of their hand and into your hand faster. Amazon is an example of that. They've got these massive warehouses and, and there's a whole bunch of high tech stuff going on. They use both human and robot workers. Uh, one source describes the delivery operation uh, going on with the buildings. He says that the robots kind of look like giant beetles scurrying around, uh, up and down the shelves loaded with merchandise weighing up to 3,000 pounds on their backs. And hundreds of them are moving without anybody helping them inside of a large caged area, walking around in between the aisles but never colliding. And on the edge of the cage, there's a human and they are stuffing products into the shelves and refilling the inventory. And the robots take those shelves away when a customer order arrives for the products and it's stored on the back of these robots and they line up in stations on the other side of the cage, kind of like going through an easy tag line. And there, another human picks and follows the instructions on the computer screens, grabbing items off the shelves and putting them in plastic bins, which go off on conveyor belts destined for packers who put them in those nice cardboard boxes we like to see on our doorsteps when the products come from Amazon. Uh, and, and, and for delivery, they use a bunch of different people, FedEx and UPS and the US Postal Service. And, and they're also figuring out how to do delivery without people. But the reason they spend all that time and money is because delivery is important and they do not want to damage the reputation of their name by not being able to deliver as promised. Our reputation is all we have in some places. I once heard from one of my old bosses, he was an Air Force guy and he used to say that it takes uh, it takes 10 attaboys to get rid of one all man. It takes 10 attaboys to get rid of one all man. Why? Because you are protecting your reputation. Warren Buffett says that it takes a lifetime to build and only one or two bad decisions to destroy. And so they're, 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 they're talking about protecting the name. And they're, they're worried about the fulfillment, the delivery on what was promised in order to protect that name. And fulfillment is an odd word to use in this regard, but uh, retail orders need to be fulfilled. Customers must be satisfied or the company will not remain in business for long. And seeing that cardboard box with the smile etched in it is exciting coming up on my doorstep, but that is nothing compared to the larger goal of fulfillment that we seek in life, a fulfillment that only God can deliver. Uh, this passage is in the middle of Paul's wrestling with the fact that many of his fellow Hebrews have not accepted Jesus as a, the Messiah. The whole argument goes from, from Romans 9 through Romans 11, but what I read in your hearing reflects the fact that Paul's mind and faith are, 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 are shaped by the deep understanding and the familiarity with the Old Testament and the larger narrative of the people of Israel. These few verses in Romans 10 uh, take this reader on a journey through the Old Testament. In other words... Paul is using the Old Testament to justify what he's saying in what we call the New Testament. He's using the Old Testament to make his point that we now read in the New Testament. 
Uh, they say the third time's a charm. He's using that half of the Bible that we pretend don't exist and say that we are no longer under to make the point that he... Uh, He's using the Old Testament. He's quoting Isaiah and he's quoting Deuteronomy and he's quoting Joel. And then we all have it as Romans 10. Using the Old Testament, the parts of the Bible you like are the parts of the Bible that you like because they stand on the foundation of the parts of the Bible you don't like. Amen, pastor. Lights. Amen, pastor. Floor. Amen. The parts that you are standing on, this is not a vending machine where you can go in, stick some money in, push a button and say, I'll take that. This is not Piccadilly's or, or Luby's or some other all-you-can-eat buffet where I say, I'm going to have a little bit of this, but I'm going to skip over that, and I'm going to have a little bit of this, and y'all can send this back. The parts that he's doing this through the Old Testament. And he's letting us know that Jesus was here to fulfill all of the prophecies that came in the Old Testament. Ah, there's an availability of God's righteousness. Uh, he says, I didn't read it in your hearing, but he says around in uh, uh, verse 7, he says, Who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. And he also talks about in 6, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. Talking about who's going up or down. But he understands that the confession, uh, uh, the salvation through Christ is in both one's mouth and in one's heart. In his mouth. And in his heart. Now, I could say, well, I, I, I love my wife. I love her so much. But if I don't ever tell her I love her, how would she know? If I don't ever say anything and I'm just nice to her, what, what does that add up? But on the other hand, if I say I love my wife, but I don't treat her like I love my wife, what does that mean? It's not an either or, it's a both and. We got to say it, and then we got to do something about it. That is how we protect our name. And not just with the dealings of wives or uh, 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 husbands or everything that we do. All we have is our name. Amen. And this passage is a quotation from uh, Deuteronomy where he says in Deuteronomy 30 and 14, the word is near you on your lips and on your heart. Paul is adding a bit of a commentary to it uh, to, to make his point. But the, the, the fact is that this is intimately a part of their identity. Uh, uh, neither far up in heaven nor far away on earth, the Israelites, like the Christians, have to operate in community. It doesn't mean anything if I just read the scripture that says that we are supposed to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. It doesn't mean anything if I say that James tells us that pure and undefiled religion is this, to take care of the widows and the orphans. If I sit around and read that, if I pull up to the, 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 the stoplight and I say to the person at the stoplight holding the sign, be fed and warmed in the name of Jesus, and then just burn off and don't do nothing about it. I can't just talk about it. I got to be about it. I can't just mean well. Where are the actions behind my meaning? Mm. And this thing is, is hard. We can't be. I remember the Reverend Dr. Jamie Clark Souls beating it into my head every time I took New Testament 1 and 2 in cemetery. Seminary. Seminary. <laughs> Saying it every time that you can't be a Christian outside of community. You can't be a Christian outside of community. How you treat others. I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say it again. In the gospel according to Matthew chapter 22, they asked him, Rabbi, which of the laws is the greatest? And he said to love your Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And a second is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
So if we're going to be believers, we need to love God and love people. Nah. And, and, and he says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Saying Jesus is Lord was a scandalous statement at that time. We've gotten a little comfortable in this thing called Christianity, but they were not comfortable in this thing called Christianity when these texts were being written. When he wrote to the church at Rome, being a believer in Jesus Christ could get you a nice hot bath and some boiling water. Being a believer in Jesus Christ meant you had to box with some lions in a coliseum. Being a believer in Jesus Christ meant that as you were worshiping in service, somebody could kick your door down and stab you. But they were still saying Jesus is Lord. And that was a scandalous statement at that time because the people were saying Caesar is Lord. We've come to only equate the, the verse of Jesus is Lord and Jesus being King of Kings and Lord of Lords to only mean something spiritual. But during that time, that is what they were saying about Caesar. People were saying that Caesar was Lord and Caesar was King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so this was something that was letting them know that I serve somebody greater than that president or I serve somebody greater than that governor. I serve somebody greater than that uh, the, than the, 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 the mayor or the city council. My answer to a higher power, that is my Lord, Amen. not who's been voted in. That, th that was scandalous, and they had to say that their priorities were bigger than what was going around at the time. Jesus is Lord. And confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead. Confession is good for the soul. Confession is why shows like CSI and CSI Cyber and CSI New York and NCIS, and NCIS Los Angeles, confession is why those stories are fantasy, but the first 48 is reality. Amen. I like those shows. I watch them all the time. The, the crime is committed. And, and, and they, they pull out all of these great gadgets and technology and, and DNA and examine fingerprints and do all of these things to try to catch the bad guy on CSI and NCIS. And they do all of these things and in 42 minutes, uh, they capture the bad guy. But first 48 is a little more realistic. The fact of the matter is what it takes to wrap up the case, especially a lot of times in the first 48, is the confession. That is the quickest way to wrap up the case. And so the fantasy is nice, but the reality is the confession. Ah, the confession of Jesus is Lord it, it is a fundamental article of belief in the early church. He only he talks about it in Romans and he talks about it in 1 Corinthians and talks about it in 2 Corinthians and talks about it in Philippians and talks about it in Colossians. And it was one of the earliest and most widespread confession of faith in the Greek speaking areas of Christianity. The confession, they say, was likely required to in, in order to participate in the church. And so you have this availability. Notice I haven't said there's any kind of restrictions on it. I haven't said only one type of person can confess. Check, check, two, two, one. No restrictions. And so it's available, and then once it's available, we receive it. We, can, we receive it in the heart and confirm it in the mouth. Uh, for Paul, the resurrection was to prove that Jesus was the Messiah. And we don't read the Bible just to know facts and be able to connect stories and people. But rather, we read the Bible to let this ongoing relationship with God and us to the world in our hearts and mind practice a deep and open and disciplined reading of Scripture that we can come to a place of trust in God's love. Uh, to memorize, we got to do more than just memorize the passages. Uh, let me prove it, let me prove it, let me prove Luke chapter 4, verses 10 through 11, and when Jesus was tempted in the, day, in the 40 days uh, in the wilderness, he was tempted. And the person tempting him used scripture. 
misquoted scripture, but scripture nonetheless. So it's not just about saying it, it's what we got to do along with it. And Jesus responded with accurate quoting of the word. How can we do that if we don't spend any time reading? Hmm. The Bible says the study to show ourselves approved, a workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know other religions call, a, call Christians people of the book? Uh, that's a sermon for another Sunday, but we ought to spend some time reading. We'll find out a whole lot about it. Uh, but the word confession is often understood to mean acknowledging guilt. Or, or owning up to a transgression. Uh, but in the Greek, it, it, it's more, it also means to simply affirm or to acknowledge. And the word that they use for confess uh, is used twice in this short text that we read. And it says, if we confess, we'll no longer be shamed by our plight of sin. Uh, a lack of confession is why so many things are in trouble right now. Marriages and relationships over because somebody wasn't meeting up to some unspoken expectations. Friends and family members no longer talking to one another about something that made one mad and they didn't want to tell them that it made it mad. Friend, business deals going wrong because they didn't want to talk to one another. That's part of our problem. These now, we don't want to open up our mouths and let somebody know what's really going on. We don't want to open up our mouths and tell somebody how we really feel about a situation. We ought to be able to confess. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear the faintest cry and answer by and by. How many of you know that having a little talk with Jesus will make it all right? Ah, and if we confess and believe, we'll be saved. Ah, that, that word saved in the Greek is sozo. And it means a little more than the, the by and by. We talk about a text like this and talk about being saved and think that this is what is going to keep us from the barbecue pit. <laughs> and so we think about the, 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 the being delivered from the penalties and, and, and being saved from the evils, but that sozo was more than just that. It was also uh, to keep someone from injury or peril. To save a suffering one, to save someone from a disease, to make well, to restore, to preserve the one who is in danger or destruction, to rescue. So when we talk about it, the, the, the being saved is not just the by and by, it's the here and now. Can I, can I step on some toes? I can't talk about your soul going to heaven and getting you saved if you don't know where your next meal is coming from. We're talking about what's going to happen when every day is Sunday and streets of gold and there are people who, who, who don't have a place to stay, don't have a roof over their head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, okay. We're we, we, we talking about all of these things and there are oppressive governments and, and oppressive structures going on with people all around the world. Mm -hmm. So this sozo, this save, this salvation is not just about what happens when you come to church for the absolute last time. Uh, when Jesus says that the kingdom of hand, the kingdom of God is at hand, there's a dual meaning to that. Both meaning that it's coming and it is here. Both meaning that it's out of our reach and it is in our reach. Amen. To deliver, to protect, to heal, to preserve, to save oneself, to make whole. We offer in more than fire insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at least we need to be. <laughs> and the scope of his righteousness, it's available to all. And you can, you can receive it. But it's also impartial and universal. It says there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. There's no distinction between white and black. There's no distinction between educated and uneducated. There's no distinction between rich and poor. There's no, his, uh, the, God's salvation is available for all. 
And anyone calling on the name of the Lord will be saved. I'm reminded of the Psalm 91 reading that says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. A psalm about God's deliverance. That's not just a bunch of empty words when we talk about being saved. Sometimes God intervenes in the troubling times, changing our circumstances in unexpected ways. And when this happens, we call it a miracle. Uh, but we don't have to expect that outcome exactly the way that we wanted it to happen, how we wanted it to happen, when we wanted it to happen, and where we wanted it to happen. Sometimes when we go through the storm, the shelter and the shadow is protecting us while we go through the storm. Sometimes he's with us in the storm so that we can go through it and come out better on the other side. Helping us discover levels of faith that we never knew we had. That's also a kind of miracle. For who would have thought that at the beginning of the storm, we would have had what it took to get through of it. Some of us didn't have a prayer life until trouble came down our way. Some of us didn't want to come and read the scriptures and study until some trouble came down our ways. And then we had to learn that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's how we learned that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will carry us through it. That's how we learned all of these things that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary walk and not faint so we journey through these ups and downs in times of joy and pain the physical and the emotional and, and we find out that the only way to make it is one step at a time but we know that God guides our steps and together our Lord and us we are gonna get through it and when we come out on the other side we'll be stronger his lordship is impartial and everybody that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everybody means everybody everybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everybody means everybody Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everybody means everybody. We've tried to decide what everybody means. But everybody means everybody. The whole world is eligible to join in with us. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Because that name is the name that's above all names. It's that name that causes demons to tremble. It's that name that causes the enemy to be defeated. It's that name that is king of kings and lord of lords. That's above all. It's that name. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all. There's a name that causes the demons to tremble and everything to be defeated. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. That name went all the way to Calvary. That name carried to the cross. That name went to Golgotha, went to AKA the place of the skull. That name went into a borrowed tomb and that name stayed there for three days. But early on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church open and we invite you to come. Thank you for listening to this message. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you found this message. If this message blessed you, be a blessing to someone else and share it. Connect with Pastor Johnny on Instagram and Twitter, and be sure to like Faith UMC Dickinson on Facebook.